In answer to the question, um, how many Australian detention centres are there? I believe there's 12 that are operating at the moment. Uh, some of them are just coming into uh, operation. Uh, there are some that have closed. Uh, the biggest ones are places like uh, Christmas Island and the um, uh, Curtin Immigration Reception and Processing Centre, uh, both operated by Serco subcontractors. Uh, there's also the Darwin um, alternative place of detention um, and uh, there's um, there's a narrow um, regional processing center which I think takes the majority of cases uh, I think at the moment it's got about 1,200 migrants there we're thinking of a much bigger operation and yet we've got very few detention centres available. Uh, this is the, the, the British approach uh, needs at the very least to learn from what Australia has done and either do it better or do it differently. At the moment it's planning to do it worse and it's planning to fall below even the standards of Australia. Australia has been heavily criticised internationally and uh, in, uh, in Australia itself, across Australia itself. And Suella Braverman thinks that her pie-eyed, half-cock scheme for Rwanda uh, is simply enough if she repeats it enough. Because you repeat something doesn't mean it's right. It simply means you become some sort of cuckoo. And Suella Braverman uh, masquerades as a cuckoo in so many ways. She's stolen somebody else's idea that's Pretty Patel's idea. Pretty Patel clearly didn't do it very um, thoroughly. Neither Pretty Patel nor Suella Bravman uh, seem to have gone to Australia, uh, have looked at the Nauru and the uh, Christmas Island detention centres. Neither of them have learnt uh, from what's going on there. Neither of them have been to Sydney, to Villa Wood. Uh, they've not been to, um, what is it, uh, Yonga Hill Im um, Immigration Detention Centre. Um, again, operated by Serco. Have they talked to Serco? Um, the, um, uh, I, I don't approve of the Australian system, nor does the United Nations. But the Australian system uh, at least has some sort of structure. And Suella Braverman's system has none. And it's falling to pieces by the minute. And as I say, slogans alone are not enough to conduct a policy. The policy is immoral. Uh, I think um, I think the policy is, would be immoral even if it were based on the Australian system. The fact is, uh, it's a loose copy of the Australian system. It's a shoddy, second-rate um, facsimile of the Australian system with many errors in it because the Home Office Secretary of State hasn't bothered to do her work. She hasn't bothered to check the details. She hasn't bothered to establish whether Rwanda is safe at the moment, will be safe in 10 or 15 years' time when the migrant centres will still be operational there, and uh, whether if, Rwanda, if the current Rwanda government were to fall, um, what responsibility would we have for those migrants who are um, stuck in Rwanda? And what is the financial, what is the financial um, gain for us if we pay so much money for each individual um, migrant to be sent to Rwanda in return for receiving a Rwandan migrant in the UK? What is the financial um, impact of that? What is the impact um, in terms of our society of all these Rwandans coming? into our country. Surely uh, the right-wing press is obsessed with migration, not with the type of migration. <laughs> the, the, the press is not, um, is not worried about where the migrants are coming from. It's not going to be uh, all the more um, enthusiastic about migrants from Rwanda rather than migrants from Ukraine or Afghanistan or Libya or Syria. There is madness in this. And there is madness in the sloganizing because people haven't looked at the small print and nor 
uh, uh, you know, they take their cue from Suella Brabman because Suella Brabman doesn't even know that there is any small print.